Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and today I'm going to talk about light. What is light? Well, we have a tendency to take light for granted because everything we see is light or light reflected off of surfaces. Um, but what is light? Light is actually a really thin strand of electromagnetic radiation from 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers. So what does that mean? Well, when you look at an orange, the reason an orange looks like an orange, the reason it looks orange for that matter, is that it's only reflecting electromagnetic radiation that has a specific frequency of light, uh, or orange light. So how do we see the different colors of light? Well, we can use a prism to do that. And so this is a prism. All you do is run, run regular light at it. Uh, regular light is just going to be white light. And as the light comes at the glass at an angle, it will slow down as it enters into the glass. And as it does that, it bends. And we call that refraction. It's a wave, and so it's going to bend. But depending on the wavelength of the light, it's going to bend a different amount. And so we see this beautiful spectrum of light that we can see, in other words, we've broken light down into the colors. But what are the colors then? Well, let's look at the electromagnetic spectrum. Electromagnetic spectrum, it, it lays out all the different forms of radiation from very, very low frequency to very, very high frequency. Now, what is frequency? Remember, frequency is going to be the number of waves per second, and we measure that in hertz. And so things out here, like radio waves and microwaves and even infrared light, have really, really low frequency. In other words, the waves aren't coming very quickly. Um, as we move to this side of the spectrum, then we have a really high frequency wave, so like gamma rays or x-rays. And so if you remember when we were talking about waves, the velocity of a wave is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. And so if you increase the frequency, what's going to happen to the wavelength? The wavelength is going to decrease. And so let's look on the other side. So as we increase the frequency in this side, we're actually going to increase the wavelength in this side. So what does that mean? These things out here, even though they have a really uh, high wavelength, they have a really low frequency. So radio waves actually have a, a wavelength. In other words, the distance between different waves is going to be tens and tens of meters. Really, really long waves out here, but they're going to have really, really um, low wavelength when we look on the other side. So what is light then? Light is simply this. It's simply this tiny section of, of radiation between UV light and infrared light. And that's all we can see. In other words, it's, it's a, a, a thin band of radiation from 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers. And what is a nanometer? A nanometer is a billionth of a meter. So it's incredibly small. Um, but this is what light is. It's all that we can see. And so we can't see things out here, and we can't see things out here. It doesn't mean that they can't damage us or we can interact with them. It's just that our eye can't pick it up, and therefore our brain can't perceive it. So let me give you a real-world example of that. This right here is an infrared pen, uh, and you can use it to control a, um, a Wiimote. And so if you've ever used a Wii before, those are infrared lights that are up on the top of your TV. And so I'm going to hold this up to the camera, and I'm going to click the button. And as I, if I can hold it still and click the button, you should be able to see the light go on and off. It's a light-emitting diode, and it's a light-emitting diode that only emits light in the infrared spectrum, and so this area right here. And so what's weird about that? It's just a flashing light. Well, the cool thing is that you can see that because the camera is able to pick up the infrared light and transfer it into uh, visible light, but I can't see it. In other words, as I click this over and over again, I don't see anything. It looks like it never changes, and that's because my eye can't perceive that. It lays outside of this. Now, there are some organisms that can pick up UV light, and there are some organisms that can pick up uh, infrared light, um, but we just can't do it. So if you look at a flower, for example, it looks like just petals. But an insect can pick up some of that ultraviolet rays, and it can actually see landing strips on the flower directing it to the pollen. Uh, or or a, a rattlesnake, for example, can pick up heat in infrared, um, and so it can see that at night. So how does, our, how does our eye actually work? Our eye is pretty simple. Um, we've got a lens on the outside. We have a hole called the pupil. So what happens is, as the light comes in, it is refracted or bent, and then it shines on the back of the eye. And so in the back of the eye, we have a retina. And so the retina is made up of two different cells. Some of those are called cones, and some of those are called rods. And what they're able to do is to pick up the visible light, in other words, that electromagnetic radiation, they're able to perceive that, and then create a nerve impulse that eventually goes to the brain. And so if we don't have 
cells that are modified to pick up that light or that electromagnetic radiation that we don't see. In other words, if you shine light in my ear, I can't hear it. Likewise, if you show, throw uh, sound at my eyes, I can't see it. Uh, we have to have cells that are modified to pick that up. So that's the eye. Um, but wh why did I put the brain here? Well, we actually have to perceive those, that electromagnetic radiation coming down our optic nerve to our brain before we can actually perceive it. And so our brain makes sense of what's coming down. So we can trick our brain very easily. And so optical illusions are always fun. So we've got A and B. Both of these squares are the exact same color. You don't perceive them as the same color, the same shading. And the reason why is that we think that this one is in the shade. But if you cover up A and look at B or cover up B and look at A and nothing else, they're going to be the exact same shade. And so again, what we perceive is not just the work of the eye, but it's the work of the brain and what we do. One of the best studies I've ever seen on this is they had people wear goggles where goggles would flip up everything they see. So what you saw was upside down. And if you do that to a person, they quickly fall down. And it takes them days and days and they get really sick. But eventually their brain will start to flip the image upside down. And so our brain is plastic. It can make sense of what we perceive. The problem with that study is if you take the, the glasses off again, then everything's flipped upside down. So light is, is what we are surrounded by. But also light is something that we actually use. And so some of the first light bulbs are what are called incandescent light bulbs. And they produce just this pure light this white light. Uh, it took them a while to figure out what to make this filament out of, but essentially what you're doing is running electricity through. So electricity comes through the bottom, goes through this filament, and then it comes out the side. This is called an Edison screw. It allows you to screw it into a socket. Um, but the problem they had is that the filaments kept burning out as they'd run high energy through it. Eventually they figured out that you had to surround it by an inert gas. Um, and so it wouldn't react with the oxygen in the uh, air. And you first have to protect it, but then you have to have a really uh, stable wire. And so most of them are made of tungsten. Um, the problem with an incandescent light is about 90% of the energy that goes into a light actually comes out as heat. And so they're not super efficient. And so this is a fluorescent light. Fluorescent light works in a little bit different way. You have mercury vapor inside it. We run a specific amount of current through that, and we get ultraviolet radiation coming off of the mercury uh, vapor. It then causes the phosphor to uh, emit light on the surface. Um, the good thing about that is it doesn't create as much heat. The bad thing about it is that you have to have a ballast in the bottom so you can keep a constant amount of current going through it. And so we're going to get uh, way more light and not as much heat, but it takes more to buy one of these fluorescent lights. What's the future? The, probably, the future is in light emitting diodes or LED. Uh, a, a diode is simply a, um electrical component that only allows electricity to go in one direction. And these light emitting diodes actually use a semiconductor and as the electrons bounce through it they actually emit photons. Um, the problem with the light emitting diodes is that they're expensive and the costs are coming down quite a bit. The other problem is that they only give off light in one specific uh, wavelength. And so what they can do in a light is they can combine a number of different uh, light emitting di diodes or LEDs and they can actually give off light um, that's more uh, closely resembling the white light that comes off from an incandescent light. And so that's light. Again, it's a thin, narrow band of electromagnetic radiation. And it's pretty important because it's everything that we see.